Hey there. In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about pod networking for Kubernetes on Azure. There's a few different ways you can set up your pod networking. I'll walk you through the differences and why you might choose one versus another for both self-managed clusters and Azure's managed Kubernetes service, AKS. So let's start with a couple of Kubernetes nodes. The Azure virtual machines they're running on both have ETH0 network interfaces, which connect them to the underlying Azure network. Under the covers, each instance has an Azure network interface configured with the node's IP address. Azure networking handles the rest for you. The pods running on each of the nodes also have IP addresses. How these are allocated depends on the type of pod networking you're using, and in particular, which CNI IPAM IP address management plugin is being used. We'll start by looking at the default networking option for Azure AKS, KubeNet, sometimes referred to as basic networking in the Azure documentation. This uses the host local IPAM plugin to allocate each node a slash 24 from the main Kubernetes pod cider IP address range. The pods on each node then use IP addresses from within that slash 24. Each pod has its own networking environment isolated from the host using Linux network namespaces. Pods are connected to the host using a pair of virtual Ethernet interfaces, often referred to as a VETH pair. The pods see ETH0 as their interface and the host has an algorithmically generated interface name beginning with VETH. KubeNet connects each of the VETH pairs to a bridge. The bridge is a software implementation of a layer 2 Ethernet switch. The Linux kernel routing is then set up to act as a very simple virtual router to connect the bridge to the rest of the world. Any packets destined for the slash 24 are routed to the bridge, and any packets for other destinations, including pods on other nodes, are routed out of ETH0 to the Azure network. So we have the Linux networking set up with KubeNet, but the Azure networking still only knows the host network interface IP addresses and knows nothing about where the pods are. So if a pod on one node tries to send traffic to a pod on another node, it will get switched out over the bridge and then routed out of ETH0 to the Azure network. But then the Azure networking doesn't know what to do with the packet because it's not aware of the pod IP addresses at all. So to complete the picture, each Azure network interface needs to be configured with enable IP forwarding and user defined routes need to be added to the underlying Azure subnet for each slash 24 to direct traffic to the corresponding node. If you're using AKS or using an installer such as ACS engine, then this is all automated for you. So there's no manual steps here. Traffic can then flow freely between pods across nodes within the subnet. However, the user-defined routes are subnet specific, so the broader network still doesn't know what to do with packets to or from pod IPs. So for example, if a pod were to try to connect to a workload running on a VM elsewhere in Azure, then the Azure networking for the other subnet would not know how to correctly handle the traffic. The standard way this problem is solved in Kubernetes is to use NAT, Network Address Translation. The Linux kernel is configured so that any connection from a pod to an IP address outside of the cluster is source matted to use the node IP of the node hosting the pod. As the Azure networking is aware of the node IPs, it can then route the traffic normally across the broader network. Any return traffic associated with the connection automatically gets mapped back to the original pod IP address by the Linux kernel, so the pod is unaware any of this happened. Connections to pods from outside of the subnet must be made via a Kubernetes service. KubeProxy sets up the Linux kernel so that when a connection to a service reaches a node in the cluster, it's natted to change the destination address from the node IP and service port to load balance to one of the pods and pod ports backing the service. Note that this might mean sending the packet to a pod on a different node unless the service has been configured with local only routing policy. I'll dig deeper into Kubernetes services in another video. Both AKS and ACS Engine have built-in support for integrating Calico to provide network policy with this basic networking setup. With Calico in the picture, there are a few small differences in the way the Linux networking is set up. There's a trivial difference that the host side of the pod VETH pair names start with Kali rather than VETH. More significantly, Calico removes the need for a bridge, connecting the pods directly to the host networking routing. This is great for simplicity and also provides a small performance boost compared to running vanilla KubeNet. In addition, Calico provides network policy enforcement so you can secure your workloads. 
You can think of this as putting a virtual firewall in front of every pod that is dynamically configured in real time based on the Kubernetes and Calico network policies you have defined. It makes it incredibly easy to lock down your pod network so the only traffic that is allowed to flow is the traffic you are expecting to flow. Another option for pod networking is to use the Azure CNI plugin. Both AKS and ACS Engine have built-in support for integrating this with Calico to provide network policy. The way it sets up Linux networking is very similar but with a few small differences. There's a trivial difference that the host side of the pod VETH pair names start with AZV. More significantly, the pods are allocated IP addresses from the underlying VNet subnet and the pod IPs are configured as secondary IPs on the VM's network interfaces. As a result, the underlying VNet is fully aware of the pod IP addresses without needing user-defined routes. External VMs can connect directly to pod IPs and vice versa. This is most useful if you have a need for VMs in other subnets to be able to connect directly to pods without going via a Kubernetes service. It's worth noting that you can also run the Azure CNI plugin without Calico. In this case, a bridge is reintroduced into the Linux networking and you would be limited to the reduced subset of network policy that the Azure CNI plugin implements, which is significantly less rich than that offered by Calico. One downside of using the Azure CNI plugin is the potential to run into IP address range exhaustion challenges when running particularly large clusters or if you have limited address space available for cluster use due to other enterprise address space demands. The final option I'll cover in this video, which can help alleviate some of these challenges, is to use a pure Calico network, which has minimal dependencies on the underlying Azure networking, and uses the Calico IPAM plugin for IP address management. Calico IPAM supports efficient IP address space use with no need to allocate slash 24s per node or IP addresses from the underlying VNet. The traditional way of minimizing dependencies on the underlying network is to use an overlay. When running on Azure, Calico can provide a VXLAN overlay implemented as virtual interfaces within the Linux kernel. When a pod sends a packet to a pod on a different node, the original packet is encapsulated using VXLAN into an outer packet using the node IP addresses, hiding the pod IPs of the original inner packet. Azure networking handles this just like any other node-to-node -node traffic. On the receiving node, the VXLAN packet is de-encapsulated to reveal the original inner packet, which is delivered to the destination pod. This is all done in the Linux kernel, so it's about as efficient as it can be, but it still represents an overhead which you might want to avoid if running network-intensive workloads. The good news is that with Calico, if your nodes are running within a single subnet, you can avoid the need for an overlay by configuring the Azure network interfaces with Enable IP Forwarding. And as Calico is handling the routing, there's no need to add any user-defined routes to the VNet. This is great for performance, and in the unlikely event that you have a need to split the cluster across multiple subnets, Calico is smart enough to switch to the VXLAN overlay for just the traffic between subnets. So you'll always get the best achievable performance for every packet, only using overlay for the packets where it's really needed. And with Calico's excellent scaling characteristics and efficient IP address management, your pod network will scale up to the limits of Kubernetes if you need it to. That's all for now. I hope you found this quick video useful, and thanks for watching.